So if low iron is the most common nutrient deficiency in the world, what causes iron deficiency? Or am I at risk of becoming anemic? Now, sometimes the culprit is easy to identify, but other times it takes some good detective work. So today we're going to talk about the common risk factors that can cause your iron levels to drop. And with this information, you'll be able to work with your doctor and be proactive in identifying the problem so that you can really focus on raising your iron back to healthy levels. So stick with me to learn about these hidden risk factors. Now, also, I included a printable checklist of the common causes and the special blood test that you've got to ask for to identify iron dis- deficiency in the iron repair manual. Uh, so if you'll just click the link below, uh, I'll send you a free copy. Now, the risk factors for low iron fall into several categories, and we'll talk about each category individually. They are increased iron demand, frequent blood loss, inflammation, and poor absorption. So the first category is increased iron demand. Now our bodies rely on iron for a huge number of our cellular and metabolic functions every single day. But what happens if our bodies start to need more iron than it has available to use? And what can cause us to start needing more iron than usual? These are things like the physical demands of pregnancy and breastfeeding. Now, it's estimated that around 77% of pregnant women will experience some level of iron deficiency during their pregnancy. Now, this happens because not only are you supplying your own needs as usual, but now your body is responsible for supplying the essential nutrients for the growth of your baby as well. Now, I've been pregnant five times, and I was iron deficient every single time. Then periods of rapid growth, like the growth spurts that children and teenagers go through, dramatically increase the body's iron needs to allow for healthy growth. Now, it's estimated that nearly 50 to 60% of children and adolescents may become iron deficient at some point. But there's a big problem with that. The routine lab work does not identify the first stages of low iron, and it's not usually identified until the advanced stages of iron deficiency, which is anemia. Then, I mean, honestly, I think that some of the fatigue and sluggishness that teenagers are famous for may actually be a symptom of low iron caused by the rapid growth that they're experiencing, as fatigue is one of the biggest symptoms. Now, I've got another video that goes into the common symptoms of low iron, so I'll put a link for that in the description so that you can check that out later if you need to. Okay, so another common factor that increases iron demand is endurance athletics or intense exercise. Now, this happens because not only is the iron is iron lost through sweat and the sloughing of skin cells during exercise, but the inflammation caused by intense exercise raises hepcidin levels, which thereby decreases iron absorption from the diet. So to make up for these losses, the body needs more iron to maintain that optimal athletic performance. Okay, so the second risk category is frequent loss of blood. Our bodies work really hard to keep iron at a healthy level, but when the body loses blood, it may wind up struggling to compensate for that loss and iron deficiency will develop. So in women, heavy menstrual blood loss is the most common and obvious cause of iron deficiency. Now this happens because your body is constantly trying to restore optimal iron levels to make up for the blood loss that you experience each and every month. So for years, I had ridiculously heavy periods that left me feeling literally drained and lifeless every single month, but my body just couldn't keep up. So another common factor that can affect both women and men is blood loss from the gut. This can include gastric ulcers, intestinal bleeds, and even hemorrhoids. Um, Even very small or slow loss of blood will add up over time 
and can cause iron deficiency. Now, it's entirely possible that you may not even be aware that these these small losses of blood are happening. Um, Your doctor can order several exploratory procedures to discover whether or not blood loss from the intestine is causing your low iron levels. Now, finally, loss of blood from surgery, childbirth, and even frequent blood donation may contribute to low iron levels. Then the next risk factor that can cause low iron is chronic inflammation. Now, people with certain long-term inflammatory conditions frequently develop iron deficiency. These conditions include digestive disorders like inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's, celiac, also rheumatoid arthritis, heart failure, and chronic kidney disease. It's estimated that up to 90% of IBD patients experience iron deficiency. Now this happens because the inflammation caused by these conditions triggers the body to increase hepcidin levels and hepcidin's job is to block iron absorption and eventually iron deficiency will occur. Now I'll put a link to another video that really dives into how important hepcidin is in iron absorption so that you can check that out after this video. So the next factor is reduced absorptive capacity or malabsorption. Now, because iron is an essential mineral, that means that our bodies cannot make it, we have to get it from our diets. But if our ability to absorb iron is reduced, that can quickly lead to low iron levels. So again, those with compromised digestive systems like IBS, IBD, Crohn's, celiac, have a really hard time absorbing iron because of the inflammation in the gut. Then also surgeries that alter the digestive tract, like gastric bypass or vertical sleeve gastrectomy, can reduce your body's ability to absorb iron, and then you ultimately wind up iron deficient. Um, Intestinal infection, bacterial overgrowth, like H. pylori, and even the presence of parasites can affect the iron that your body is able to absorb. So there are tests that your doctor may need to to order to identify or rule these out as possible causes. Now, another factor that is really often overlooked is frequent use of antacids or PPIs, which is proton pump inhibitors. Now, these medications are designed to reduce the acidity of the stomach and alleviate the symptoms of GERD or acid reflux. But the problem is that non-heme iron requires an acidic environment for absorption. So by reducing the acidity of the stomach through the use of antacids, you are greatly reducing your ability to absorb non-heme iron. Now, another factor that affects iron absorption is simply dietary intake. Vegans and vegetarians are often at a high risk for iron deficiency because their their diet lacks heme iron from meat, which is much more readily absorbed than non-heme or plant-based iron. Now, this is because there are a number of compounds in many of our foods and drinks that block or inhibit non-heme absorption. For example, If you drink coffee, tea, or milk frequently, the tannic acid and calcium in these drinks actually binds to the iron in your intestine and greatly reduces the absorption of non-heme iron. So as you can see, some of the things that cause iron deficiency are easy to identify, but others may require some detective work to find the root of the problem, but it's definitely worth taking the time to discover what is causing your low iron levels. So if you see yourself in any of these categories, or if you've got questions about this or ideas for future videos, I would love to hear from you. So just leave me a comment down below. And finally, if this video was helpful, please hit the like and subscribe button, click that bell, so that not only will you be the first to know when there's a new video that you might like, but it also helps other people that are struggling with iron deficiency and have questions. It helps them to find these videos too. And remember, I believe 
that with the right knowledge and tools, you can fight your iron deficiency and take back your life. You're an iron warrior now. Thanks for watching.